The story of the circus in Australia and its travelling troupe of artists and acrobats has rarely been told, despite the international acclaim for many of the nation's top performers. There's now a National Institute of Circus Arts in Melbourne, where tomorrow a book titled Circus, The Australian Story is being launched. Matt Peacock reports. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, roll up, roll up to the greatest entertainment in the world, the circus. Australians like a good circus when they see one. No, 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 no! While there's children, there'll always be a circus. And Australian circuses today, as they always did, still entrance children and the young at heart. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls... Lennon's circus, now playing in Sydney's Liverpool, like most, is a family business stretching back generations. At 95, its matriarch, Dolly Lennon, has fond memories of the big top. I learnt the trapeze, just the one person up there. And my father-in-law taught me. Up you go, he's saying. He's down there while I did all these tricks. and I come back with my arms aching, my legs aching and everything. But now go up again, learn another trick or two. I was about four years old and dressed up as a clown and coming and doing a, a forward roll in the, the show. And it was great. I, I thought I was a star. Once you're hooked, you'll never leave, believes Dolly's grandson, Warren Lennon. Can you ever imagine life without a circus for you? No, never, never. My children wanting to take over running the circus. They're talking about it already. They were talking about when they were two-year-old, three-year-old circus. It's their life. Traditional circuses have evolved, along with community concerns about animal welfare. But until now, the stories of the close-knit travelling circus families have remained largely untold. It's been almost entirely overlooked by Australia's historians. Author Mark St Leon has tracked his own family's origins in Australia's rich but unchronicled circus tradition. It's a mobile, adaptable type of entertainment, so it's well suited to Australian conditions. We're a mobile, adaptable people. Mark St Leon's great-great-grandfather's circus followed the gold rush to Ballarat, and it was in this tent the Eureka Stockade rebels first met and hid their ammunition. Some of the uh, diggers armed with revolvers and pistols came down to the circus and grabbed the German bandsmen, musicians, and marched them at gunpoint up to where the stockade was being built and had them serenade the, uh, uh, the diggers all day while they were hewing and cutting all these logs to make their stockade. Circus comes to town, yes, right into the heart of Sydney, and they're ready to hoist the big top for the big show. More than a century ago, there was a golden era for Australian circus. Family troops like Ashton's and Worth's became household names as they travelled the country, then the world, with the skill of performers like May Worth winning instant fame. Shortly after arriving in New York, she's made the star of Barnum and Bailey's Three Ring Circus and she introduces the world's greatest lady bareback rider because she was doing things which Americans had never seen before, such as flipping somersaults from one horse to another. A few years later, after Mayworth, came Con Colino, um, who uh, reinvigorated the style of uh, tight wire performance by not only doing acrobatics on the tight wire but dancing along the tight wire the same as Nijinsky might have danced across uh, a ballet stage. The Aboriginal acrobat Con Colino was arguably the greatest high wire artist in history. He made backward somersaults on the wire seem easy but after five years of practice he perfected the much more dangerous and difficult forward somersault. For decades now, it's been predicted that the traditional circus, like this one, with its acrobats and clowns, would simply fade away under the onslaught of television and other electronic entertainment. 
But the circus has adapted and, as you can see, reports of its demise have been premature. Try not to sit on the bar. Stay open and just let me pull you over the bar. Okay. Yeah? yeah? Go again? The advent of the Canadian Cirque du Soleil and closer to home yeah. Circus Oz nice. have taken the art to new heights. Very good. Here at the Sydenham Trapeze School, a new generation of trapeze artists, acrobats and contortionists like Thomas Worrell is training. You want to learn the new tricks and reach these achievements and goals, but at the same time you want to learn them for a reason. The motivation towards that is being able to perform them and show people what you can do. When I first saw Flying Trapeze, I went, that's what I want to do. I want to run away and join the circus because it just seems so inspirational. Ellie Huber is now following her dream off to Montreal to train with Cirque du Soleil. It's less about the drum roll, I'm standing on this, and ta-da, like, there's my trick. Usually, like, Cirque du Soleil is very, you know, emotive and it has a story and it's, there's a reason that you're up there and, and every movement is telling something which is I think it's really great because it has another um, level. The young acrobats trainer Nat Harris believes modern circus is finding new audiences in more theatrical shows like her recent hit Amy O'Moore. I love the feeling of circus and I think you, you feel that more from the older circus. What we've turned it into is so theatrical and so modern that sometimes it almost feels more like theatre. So I think it's about not losing that component of glamour and glitz and sawdust and all that stuff, but doing it in a more modern, approachable way, I suppose. You don't need a, a PhD to appreciate circus. It can help but uh, you, don't, uh, you don't actually need one. So that's explained a lot of its popularity in years gone by and will probably continue to explain a lot of its popularity in years to come. Circus in all its forms, believes Mark St Leon, is here to stay. And for acrobat Jesse Grant, a seventh-generation member of the Ashton Circus family, it's a way of life. I'd never leave the circus. Not, not for the life of me, not for no one, not for nothing. Circus is just a part of me that I'll never take it out. And like the old saying goes, it's sawdust in your shoes. You can never get it out. Matt Peacock with that report.